How you doing, everybody? A Geezer and John and Watch Habit and Mark and Chris. Good evening from the other side. <laughs> okay. The other side of the river, Phoenix. Hang on a second. I gotta I gotta turn a light on over here. Ah. I have my lounge pants on today. <laughs> it's it's windy and rainy outside, so I figured, well, I'm not going anywhere, so got my lounge pants on. Look at it, guys. Uh How's everybody doing? Hi, Mark. Boy, you must be really up early, Mark. <laughs> Abdul, hi. Good morning, Brian and James. Hey, James, I got your uh, your collection. Good looking. Um, yeah, they are comfy. <laughs> Very comfy. God, what a day. Today, everything is just crazy. We've got a, uh, yeah. Today is trash day, and so it, it was blowing and you know and rain and everything last night. So I thought, well, we better not take it up. Uh, and then this morning the wind went down a little, and so I thought, well, we better get it up there. So <laughs> I went up in the rain and back, and couldn't get anything anything working. It just sort of like one of those Mondays, but you know we don't have Mondays anymore. We have. <laughs> today and tomorrow and tomorrow is today's tomorrow and tomorrow is yesterday uh, it's crazy okay huh. okay better turn this guy off he's gonna be uh, giving out all kinds of unwanted noises Monday is Moser day you bet I got my Moser up on um, high horology lounge we got lots of wind and rain here in Michigan Michigan, man, you guys are up early too. Hi, dear Stifle, how you doing? Um, boy, today I have a bunch of things I wanted to do. Um, afterwards, after uh, after the session, I want to. Um, uh, I have to write to the guys at Boot and Lonard and Kalen and A Watch Abbott and. Um, See what? See what else do I have to do? I have to write to them and see about getting like a sample of it. Now earlier, I, I had to, I had to write this in German, and I don't speak German, but I speak Google German and Google French. It, it worked out pretty well. So I had to uh, write to, to Rolf Lang and give him an update and stuff. And so you know, I, it was in doing that. And in, in uh, making those contacts and stuff, uh, yeah, so I thought, well, um, what about some alternatives, sources for everything? And and to me, you know, maybe not to everybody, but to me, if, if you have a luxury watch, you've got to have a luxury movement. If you don't have a luxury movement, it's not a luxury watch, and you shouldn't be paying thousands of thousands of dollars unless you're paying for bling and gold or something like that. And so I thought, okay, well, Vacher is is a source where we can get very high quality movements. Okay, they're a little more expensive. In fact, they're a lot more expensive than, let's say, an ETA, and certainly more than a Seagull. But so my question, I guess I have, is that is there any other Swiss watchmaker who has movements that say, hey, yeah, we'll sell you guys some movements that you can put in your watches and stuff that are really good. Hi, C Big. Uh, Thomas Burnett, how are you? Um, so let's um, let's talk about that. Are there any other uh, movements? I mean, is there is Vacher, the only movement company that will sell outside of the Sandoz family stable. Now, we know that um, Swat 
has shut everybody down because you know beside ETA uh Swatch also owns Blanc Pond which is Frederick Piguet and they're right you know, I thought, well maybe there's some Frederick Piguet movements but I, I I don't think they're about to sell them to someone who's going to make a watch that costs a fraction of what a brigade does and yet has the same movement and maybe even a really nice case uh okay <laughs> okay any so anyway so let's let's talk about that what would some alternatives be and while you're thinking i'm gonna have a have some coffee any ideas now we know opium opium's uh movement oh boy a tele techno or whatever they're called um i'm not sure what they are I, uh something like that i don't think they would come into um sort of luxury level of movements or it doesn't mean they're not good solid movements just like etas are good solid movements but not quite the same level techno time that's it thanks mark <laughs> Jeez. like i said today nothing works right i mean it just was started off weird okay so uh yeah techno time they went broke and um is there anyone else you know what i was thinking i wonder with um urban jurgensen uh, i doubt it but i would just think of that now they're d uh danish i think but what are what would be some other alternatives Rhonda has mechanical Swiss made movements. Yeah. Rhondas are 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 pretty inexpensive, I think, um, watch habit. They're they're mainly known for making um uh quartz watches and quartz movements. Now their movements like um Seiko and Myota, uh, and I found some sources where I, I was looking at those and you know, a 4L or a, um, what's it called? I think it's called an M10 now, the uh, Soprod. Uh, Soprod is, a lot of people think, oh, well, if it's Soprod, it's just a clone of um, an ETA. This is something that's important to know. A lot of things, a lot of movements that were made, people say, oh, they, they're just some clone of a whatever and but they're not what they are is they'll have certain features to them that will fit existing um cases and so what they'll do is that they'll say look you know we want to uh we're going to make a movement and yet it's going to fit all of these cases that used to fit these etas and so that's there's a big difference between being a clone of an eta and a, a movement that will fit in an ETA, a case made for an ETA, especially a popular one. So I think we've got a lot of, uh, yeah, M100R4, Mark, that's exactly the one I was thinking of. But, you know, and that one is ultimately based on the uh, 4L Seiko. And I'm not too sure whether that would be, you know, I, I, I've got a feeling that might be, you know, somebody says, well, yeah <laughs> i don't think so we'll see i don't know i don't know what how, what seiko uh i'm not seiko but uh so proud whether they'd sell it to us or not anyway hey flipping zippo how you doing oh so any other ideas that you have there's an 810 in my um kristen vanderclaw and so Baking potatoes. <laughs> okay. Harboring A11. Boy, wouldn't that be interesting? Uh, Mark, the problem with the harboring uh, to A11 is that they they barely make enough for all of their watches. They don't produce like, you know, 150 or 200 watches a year. They really don't make very many. And... I don't think they would uh, let go of any of their uh, A11s, um, move, uh, A11 movements. Now, you know, the, the funny thing is, what would be an interesting conversation? 
What about um, Moser? Now, H. Moser sells like 30, 40,000 uh, hairsprings, okay, which is, uh, let's see, I don't know whether that includes the balance or not. Possibly, possibly not. I'm not sure whether that includes the balance wheel. But, you know, one thing that they've done that's sort of interesting, I, I've noticed a shift in Moser. Um, and the shift has been away from hand wound and sort of a whole certain set of movements that were their, uh, their initial movements that were extremely high quality and a lot of other features that people who understand and like Moser really like. Moi. And so, you know, we're, uh, what I'm thinking, I wonder, you know, maybe, you know, I contact uh, Malin and say, look, you know, I bet you got a, a warehouse full of uh, movements. You you may not be thinking of moving, uh, of uh, selling anymore. Would you be interested in selling some to us? And man, wouldn't that be cool to have a Moser movement and H, uh, they're called HMC, some caliber HMC something for H Moser at C. Uh, and it's C is spelled CIA. So that might be something. You know, what do you think of that? Any Anybody think that's worth a try or? Yeah, Johnny, you never know. And you never know unless you try. That's That's what I think too. What do you guys think? Those are really underrated right now. They're, I know they are. That's, you know, for collectors, that's the best part because we can get these really fabulous watches for like half price and or in prices that uh, I couldn't afford. This one I got brand new. Um, <laughs> it wasn't cheap, but it was half of what they had advertised for. I mean, originally, uh, these seven-day um, movements and watches that went with them were like $24,000. And, you know, out of their 18-karat gold and everything like that. And with a power reserve indicator on the back. So, you know, it's it really a nice watch. So um, now they're they're really great prices. And this is, I, I think, for us. Now, what I'm what we're thinking about is let's say that they somehow we got a uh, one of their uh, wind up hand wound uh, movements that they're really sort of easing out of for you know a really good price and even though we know uh, and, and maybe Moser would tell us say hey, look you know we're not gonna we don't have the you can't get the warranty service and yada 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 that goes with it because. We didn't put it into the case, and we didn't do this, and we didn't do that. I don't know. That might be a sort of an interesting possibility. All I could say is no, but you never know unless you try. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Mark. Man, I wish I'd thought of that. You know, when I was interviewing uh, Malin, that would have been cool. Uh, I wrote to um, when I wrote to Rolf Lang this morning. It was apparently there's uh, more and more people who are becoming interested in that, and I think if it's if everything is done right, it'll be very successful for them. And that's that's what I'd really like to see because here's this guy who's this like really great watchmaker. Uh, he's worked with um, he's worked with H Moser. He was with H Moser for a number of years with A Longa uh, with Tutima. I think he made the um, What's it called? Minute repeater for uh, for Tutima. Uh, he was or he was one of the people who worked on it, but <laughs> I don't know who else they had there that could even begin to approach that level of um, of workmanship. So, you know, now I can tell you right now, Rolf, um, his he doesn't make enough movements. I, I don't think. I think if we ask him for for you know any number of movements, he'd do it. Uh, but the thing is, we're talking about a handmade. You know, everything is handmade. He showed me this piece of metal, and he's like, "Look at this!" this week. <laughs> I cut it. I milled it out, and it was like this. You know, piece of metal. 
talking back on the workbench. And like, you know, he's, he's really enthusiastic. Uh, but like all of us, you know, we're sort of like in limbo right now. Hi, Joas. How you doing, man? Hi, Eric. Uh, so anyway, how about some other ideas? Any other ideas you guys might have where we might get our mitts on a, a, a really good movement? Hi, Klaus. As far as I know, uh, the Fume dial is one of the parts that is not done in-house. Z Moser. Uh, oh, Klaus, how do you know that? I, I mean, you may be right, but I want to know who does it and where. Just got back from work. Oh, man, Joyce, that's good. You're, you can still go to work. That's, you know, you have to stay home. Hey, Fahrenheit, Volcane. That's an interesting point. Volcane has had their own in-house movement for years. You know, that might be an idea. Maybe contact Singer. Uh, they have these chronograph movements, Abdul. Those, <laughs> Abdul, you know. Are you talking about the uh, Agenhor? Agenhor movements? <laughs> Those would be great. Hi, Brendan. How you doing? In Fahrenheit, 451. And the CEO told me directly, Klaus? Then you that would be you couldn't ask for a better source. What Malin told you that that they had did he tell you did he happen to tell you where um uh where they had it done? Because that's interesting to know. Klaus, knock knock. Oh, he didn't. Okay. <laughs> He says, we had it. Somebody else did it. Oh, geez. Okay. Um, would Moser customize a Fume dial by applying those glasses? Who the original style quarter Arabic uh, numerals uh, for you? I don't know. You know, the thing is, is that if they have, if Moser has somebody else doing their Fume dials, I think I know someone who may know. I'll ask him. Um, because I, I did ask Moser about, uh, not Moser, but Malan, Malan, about, uh, who, um, um, who bought their hair springs and he wouldn't tell me. <laughs> I, he said, oh, I can't tell you that. And, you know, that's understandable. Uh, let's see, Thomas... Yeah, that would be the best looking dial ever. <laughs> it would be interesting. Horaj K1. Ah, oh, man. The K1 is pretty pedestrian, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's sort of like um, more as a sort of a tool movement than a luxury movement. That's my sense that I got out of looking at it. But I could be wrong, Brian. So it's a great idea, though. Hey, Trey Lowell, uh, do you think that Volcano watches will increase in value? I don't know. I, you know, um, Volcano has been hanging on by a thread for years. I don't know. Are, are they still in business? We still prefer a dial from the guy down Bill Street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a little more, he's about 20 miles away down the, more down the interstate. Um, anyway, uh, but still, those are, those are good ideas. What, Klaus, I, Klaus, I, uh, you, <laughs> Klaus, find out for us, Klaus. He, you, you're going to be the man. You're going to be the, uh, the James Bond of finding uh, the, <laughs> the Moser dial makers. Uh, you know, one thing I've been noticing, uh, it's sort of coming into a quarantine haircut, which means no haircut at all. <laughs> I got that looking, looking like Boris Johnson. <laughs> it's stuff going every which way. Sort of, that'll be a sort of one of those signs. Um, those U.S. enamel dials are amazing. Yeah, 
Um, if you haven't seen them, let me one second. Let me give you guys the um, the address on it. Hang on a second. Uh, here we go. Okay, now uh, check this out. Um, this is the this is the place that I've, I've contacted the guy, and we're going to get together after the quarantine's over. I don't know the the U.S. has got things so screwed up right now because of this thing. Um, there's a seems to be what some may consider a major leadership problem. Oh, but anyway. Um, yeah, uh, those are the ones that, um, th th they're the ones that I contacted. Let me know what you think of those. I mean, the guy's got a lot of talent. He can do any, put any kind of picture on there you want. But what I was thinking of was more enamel looking almost like porcelain. That would be very cool. Maybe you can, I can ask him about that. Uh, maybe he does porcelain for all I know. I don't know the difference. Do any of you know the difference between uh, enamel and porcelain? They do really good enameling. Um, I wonder, we could ask him about Fume also and get old Kloss off the hook. <laughs> Are you still here, Kloss? I don't want to talk about you behind your back. Um, these are these are all alternatives I've been considering. Uh, when I call my friend up, um, talk to him, he's another one I got to talk about, uh, talk with about the um his um uh fuzi and chain uh movements hey gmt master how you doing um i i'm gonna think i'll ask him about some sources too but see he his business he does restoration uh and um and some very high level uh watch uh servicing and he's always busy every time uh but he has one weakness that's fish tacos <laughs> Let me go up there. hey you want to go get some fish tacos <laughs> oh yeah <coughs> basically <coughs> talk to him over lunch <coughs> Ah, ah, okay, Fahrenheit, thank you. Um, in other words, if you have porcelain, uh, wouldn't porcelain be too brittle for a dial? Wouldn't they have to <clears throat> sort of put some kind of metal base underneath it? I don't know, uh, like I said, but porcelain is, is like a solid, like China or something like that, right? The watch case has uh, featured on his site is elegant. Yeah, yeah. No, this guy's good. He's he's. Um, I think he'd be the way to go. I mean, you know, for for getting something started. I you know there are other ones who are who are really good too. Okay, the watch case has featured on his site is elegant. All right. Okay. Uh, how about movements? Any other ideas for uh, movements? Hey, Big C, what's up, RC Big? Gerard Perigo, very underappreciated, uh, maybe can be had for a good price uh, by case and take out the movement. <laughs> no, <laughs> because that's sort of the point is, is, is to, you know, because then we'd have the dials and the cases and everything. You know, I know a guy at um, Gerard Perigo 
you know, what would you think of a Gerard Perigo movement? They're, they're sort of like a medium level luxury, but they've been used by the top luxury brands, by high, you know, by uh, uh, Vacheron Constantin, and I don't know who else, but I know that uh, VC used them in their um, overseas one. So maybe that, do you think that might be another alternative? Uh, talk to them and say, hey guys, would you be interested in selling a bunch of reprobates, <laughs> some, some, some movements? What do you think of that? What do you think, uh, C. Big? I know that some German manufacturers like uh, Honhardt, uh, who might be a good uh, alternative, make some uh, manufactured in uh, Glasuda. Okay. Hey, Kyle. Fed really pushes GP. I have to say he has he isn't wrong. Uh, lots of light nursing pieces. I agree with that too. <clears throat> of course, I taught Fed everything he knows. <laughs> Just ask him. <laughs> you want to you want to get a rise out of Fed? Hey, Pip Linda. Uh, top of the morning to you too. Uh, with JLC cell movements, you know I tell you that's a good question because. You know, JLC, um, they have sold them to other companies. I mean, other big companies use them. I can't imagine their business is, is you know, crazy busy right now. Uh, the Fed uh, encourages me to buy Laredo Chronograph. I said it wrong. I always do. Joas kind of, kind of. <laughs> hey, Tim. <laughs> How you doing? The watchmaker's watchmaker. Open for ideas. GP is fine, but would definitely prefer a manual wind and this style of watch. Yeah, see, this is this is one of the problems with washure, is that all the washures are um, uh, automatics, the ones they have for sale anyway. I th pretty sure. Uh, somebody wants to double check on that. Go ahead. Um, you know, it's really funny if you go, you know, I used to go to the, um, the ETA site a lot because they have all of the specs for all of their movements. And if I wanted to, you know, fiddle around with one, but now when I go there, every one of them says unavailable, which I mean, I, which means probably that ETA really shut the door on anything outside of the Swatch, uh, the Swatch stable, if you will. The art master range of dials are the best uh, they have, but uh, they have a VS dial and blazing across the top and dials, which doesn't look too good. You know, Thomas, all you got to do is, you know, we don't want your, we don't want no stinking logo on our watch. <laughs> you tell them that. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, they're all automatic. Uh, I'm not a fan of automatics either, but I don't know. Hermes owns 25% uh, of us, sure. Yeah, I remember when they bought them. I, I was uh, I was really happy for it because uh, whenever whenever we go to Paris, uh, my wife likes to go visit Hermes, and um, I walk out of there wearing a barrel. That place is crazy expensive, um, but they have good designs. Uh, automatics for sports manuals, manuals for dress. Joe asks, "That's not a bad. That's not a bad way to look at it." Um, uh, this one is. <laughs> this one reminds me of an automatic because I wind it up and and I'll go back look at my box uh, and it's still ticking away and the time is right. <laughs> so it's it's like oh well, you're supposed to go to sleep after seven days, but it doesn't. It keeps on ticking. Um, well, sure is a great movement. Yeah, that's why, you know, I tell you, see, I, if we did something with a really good movement as an initial one, uh, then we might be able to find some other things as a project. MPX Maxplanation, uh, buy a Nomos, take the movement out and throw the rest away. <laughs> throw away the Bauhaus design? Should, uh, well, yeah. John, it should be pronounced Vaucher, is that right? I uh, Listen, I don't try to mispronounce things. I really don't. I prefer to 
pronounce them correctly. If Vaucher is correct, I'll say Vaucher. Flip and Zippo, what's the cheapest thing uh, Air Mask sells for when I need to go out of, to get out of the doghouse? <clears throat> you know, it used to be those scarves. Um, you know, when we go on a trip or something, like, you know, all of the, all of my watches go into a safe. We should put my wife's scarves in the safe. Those things have gone up in value so much. Uh, they're they're really crazy. Uh, but, you know, they're very pretty and they're very nice and everything. So yeah, I figure, well, you know, if you have a, the um, they're good with leather. They're, that's what they're famous for. They used to make saddles. And um, so then they, for some reason, their scars became famous. And I think the reason for it was that they use they had they sent it through some kind of coloring process so you have this really rich color with it and uh the watch straps you know those are <clears throat> i think all all uh, parmigiani now come with a hermes watch strap so the watch strap is two thousand dollars and the watch is 200 something like that gmt master perfume perfume Every man needs a salmon uh, dial watch. Yeah, Fahrenheit 451. You're right, and I hate to say that because I don't have one. <laughs> if I if I'd like to get one, because those are cool. There's another kind of blue that uh, I saw that is used by um, Gronfeld, and that is just like really nice too. It must still make saddles. Twenty nine thousand bucks for a saddle. Yeah. Yeah, those are uh, those are nice saddles, you know. Just scarf it is flip and zippo. <laughs> I tell you, you better go. I tell you what, check online. Uh, they've got one of. I mean, there's so many bad websites. Theirs isn't the worst, but I mean, they want to show off all of their beautiful stuff, and so they end up with these giant files they put in there to show all of this depth of beauty. Um, yeah, that now that's a really nice gift. Uh, if I can find it, there's a place that that I found in Paris that you can get uh, seconds from from Hermes. And what these are, these are the Hermes scarves. Uh, and but they were a design that they decided, now nah, we're not going to go with this. And so they buy this. There's a store in Paris that buys them all, and uh, you can get that. If you really want to get out of the doghouse, buy an Hermes uh, bag, uh, like a, what would be a good one, um, called a Kelly, a Kelly bag. Grace Kelly had one like it. Okay, uh, the Nomos Bauhaus design is made in Berlin. Kreuzberger Design Company at Paul Link, oof, uh, if I remember well. Wow, you remember really well. <clears throat> Long jeans. Uh, perfume is the cheapest thing uh, Hermes sells. You know, uh, when we were in New York last time, uh, there's this, uh, there is a uh, Hermes perfume that my wife really likes, and we stop, stop there. And, um, man, I tell you, they treat you like – you go into an Hermes store, and they treat you like a – you're going to steal something. <laughs> you know, like, what? You don't have berets. I'm not interested in anything else. Um, how about thirds? I don't know about thirds. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, listen. Um, oh, another thing. Uh, flip and zip. Uh, check out eBay, too. Uh, best new watch, one and done, 25000 Best new watch, one and done, 25000 I don't know. I'd, I'd have to think about that. Anyway, guys, got to run. Thank you all for coming. If you're awake, and if I'm awake at 4 o'clock uh, Eastern time, I'll see you then. Take care. <laughs>